What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. If you are currently on active duty and considering exiting your active duty contract in order to get out completely, but you're kind of on the line and maybe you maybe you kind of enjoy the military, maybe you're like, man, I don't want to I want to leave active duty, but I still kind of like the military. I like being part of it. Then this video is for you. I'm going to talk to you about how to keep your foot in the door and whether you should keep your foot in the door via the guard or the reserves. We're going to talk about the pros and cons and a little bit about how I suggest going about this approach and how the best way to keep your foot in the door is. What's going on, guys? My name is Jason Birds, and this is The Military Bottom Line. On this YouTube channel, we talk about military programs, benefits, opportunities, and finances in order to help you make the most out of your military contract. I want you all to be successful after your military career. If you are a future service member, a current service member, or a veteran, this channel is for you. So give it a subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. With all that said, let's get into the good stuff. First, let's talk about the National Guard. And as I'm sure you all know at this point, the National Guard has two components. There is the Army National Guard and the Air National Guard. And believe it or not, if you are a Marine, a Navy sailor, or a Coast, Guard, Coast Guardsman, you can still transfer over to the Guard. That's still perfectly within your realm of possibilities. And just because you are in one branch does not mean you cannot go over to another. As long as you're leaving your active duty contract without any negative administrative work or legal problems, then there is no reason that you cannot join the National Guard or a reserve unit. Let's talk about some great reasons why somebody would go from active duty in any branch over to the National Guard. The National Guard is great for those that want to serve locally. Say you want to move back to the middle of nowhere, you know, Alabama, where maybe there is not a Marine Corps base for you to go to or a Coast Guard base or a Naval base to go to and be part of, of a reserve unit and you don't want to be traveling every month for your drill periods. The National Guard enables you to serve locally without completely uprooting you on a regular basis to go attend training, schools, and drill periods. The National Guard is also great if you are interested in getting a new military specialty. While some occupational specialties from your active duty time might be able to directly transfer over into the Army or Air National Guard, it is not a guarantee. It's all based on their needs for manpower, their needs for specific occupations and whatnot. And so if you are interested in changing your MOS and changing your profession in the military, then going from active duty to the National Guard might be a great way to get sent to a new school and to learn another job. While yes, from your active duty time, you have earned fantastic education benefits like the GI Bill, but you might also be interested in joining the National Guard for the state-specific education benefits that do exist. While there isn't a video on that yet, eventually, if something pops up right above here, then there's a video that exists for you to go dive in deeper on National Guard education benefits specifically. So if there's a video here, check that out. The National Guard is also great for service members who are okay with the traditional one week in a month, two weeks a year. And one of, one of the most unique and attractive aspects of the National Guard is what we call guard bumming. Between state orders, schools, TDYs, deployments, full-time orders within the state, there are so many ways to just kind of stay on orders within the National Guard. I talked to Jamie Grant, who spent his whole career in the National Guard, and he describes guard bumming very well. Check out that clip here or the full episode right here. Great interview. On the contrary to that, there are some great reasons to just go and stay in the reserves doing what you've already been doing. A great reason for going from active duty to reserves is that it's pretty much a seamless transition. You already know the branch, you already know your job, and you might even already know the unit that you could get attached to. For those reasons, the transition from active duty to the reserves is super easy and should be far less stressful than going over to the guard. Another pro to going from active duty to the reserves is that you're not going to necessarily have to get another MOS. They will find you a reserve unit and reserve opportunity for you to continue in the same MOS you've already been trained in. So if you're not interested in going back to school to learn another specialty, 
then going from active duty right to the reserves in the same branch is going to be a great way to avoid another school. Another great reason to stay in the reserves instead of going over to the guard is that you just get to stay in the same branch that you're used to. And while this is more directed towards Marines, Navy, and Coast Guard, because obviously the Army to the Army Guard and the Air Force to the Air Guard is very similar. But for those in the Marines, Navy, and Coast Guard, it can be a significant cultural change. You might need to relearn rank structure. You might need to learn how to talk Air Force or Army if you're not used to that. And, you know, some people have built up quite a bias against different branches. So uh, if you don't want to deal with that, then the reserve option is a great opportunity and great option to go with. As far as convenience goes, if you are going to be living in an area after you get out of active duty that is around a base that you can drill at and be part of the reserves at, then there's not really any benefit as far as location-wise going over to the guard. Ensuring that you're close to your drilling location is going to make life a lot easier. That one drill a month period comes around before you know it. And if you're taking long commutes to get there, it's going to wear on you and you're going to end up hating it because it's such an inconvenience. But the greatest reason, and I think the most important reason to go from active duty to the reserves is the fact that there is potentially no obligation. For those of you in the military now, if you're in your first contract, I'm sure you understand that you signed an eight-year contract in reality. Whether your first contract was four or five years of active duty, maybe six, then you still have four or three years in the IRR. You have the freedom and flexibility to essentially try out the reserves within that IRR time. I did an interview with Matt Kilby, who was a submarine officer who did this right after he got out, and he stayed in the reserves for a little bit without any obligation. Essentially, you can go to drill. You can do one drill period, one weekend period, and say, this freaking sucks. I don't want to do this. Never mind. And then you drop back to the IRR. There is nothing wrong with that. I've had multiple friends that did this. They thought they would want to try it out. They did. They didn't end up liking it. So they would just drop back to the IRR, pretend like nothing ever happened, no disciplinary action, no nothing. And so that is a huge benefit to going from active duty to the reserves. On the contrary, if you go from active duty to the National Guard, you're going to sign a six-year contract. And after having just gotten out of a four-year, maybe five-year active duty contract, it's going to be hard to stomach a six-year contract in the Guard where you're obligated to go one week in a month, two weeks a year, then you're on a deployment rotation, then you're on, you're on the hook for a lot. And so... Uh, that, that peace of mind and that freedom that you think you're going to get when you leave active duty is not going to carry with you if you go immediately over to the guard. The reality is, is that both options are fantastic. If you have any interest in continuing a military career in a part-time service component, then both the guard and the reserves are fantastic options. However, it is my recommendation that if you are interested in trying to continue your service in a part-time capacity, that you try the reserves first. Just because of the difference of the no obligation by continuing the reserves within that IRR time block versus a six-year commitment to the National Guard, there's just there's an opportunity to backstep. You've already committed. You've already done your time on active duty. And so for you to go over to the Guard, to sign a six-year contract, and immediately regret that is going to just rack you. I mean... I've met some people that have done it and they've been very, very disappointed in that decision. And so I always want to recommend that instead of just assuming you're going to be okay with that part-time life, that reserve life or that guard life, to try out the reserve life. Try out the reserve life while you do not have to sign an obligation to that, an additional contract. Try that out if you like it, if you're okay with the one week in a month, two weeks a year schedule, if you're okay with still wearing the uniform, you want the risk, of, you want to potentially go on deployment, you want to go to some schools, then if at that point you decide that the guard is going to be a better fit for your life and a better quality of life for you, then you can commit to that six years. However, I would not get out of active duty after four years, five years, and just be gung-ho about signing a guard contract. I would, I would be cautious about doing that without knowing how the part-time service 
really works with your life, your family, and your civilian goals. Because at that point, if you've left active duty, obviously you have a priority at that point, which is your civilian life, which is why you got out of the, in the first place. If your military is still your priority, uh, then you should have just stayed active duty, honestly. But those are my two cents on the options after leaving active duty. Both ways, in my opinion, are great opportunities to continue towards your federal retirement, build out that TSP, take advantage of healthcare benefits or you know the SGLI life insurance. There's a lot that can really help you while in that transition by taking advantage of the guard or the reservists. I know it was super helpful to me. I stayed in the reserves for a number of years before going to the guard for a little bit. And I'm going to tell you about that story next week. So make sure you check out the next video that's coming out. The biggest loophole I've ever found for transitioning military members. And I highly recommend you take advantage of it. But if you're still in the military and you're transitioning out, I think you're really going to enjoy this video that I made on the post 9-11 GI Bill or this video, which is really underviewed. And I'm going to guess it's because nobody actually knows what the Yellow Ribbon Program is. So I highly recommend watching the Yellow Ribbon Program video to find out more and how you can fund more expensive schooling options. But with all that said, I'm out of here for tonight and I hope you guys are well and I will see you guys next week. Peace.